Let's talk now about the Doppler effect in the situation where the observer is moving and the source is stationary. The source of sound is represented by this red dot, which I'm circling in green, and it's emitting wave fronts as such. Now, of course, the distance between wave fronts, by definition, that's equal to the wavelength. Well, let's say, for example, that you're in a car and you're speeding towards this source of sound. So here you are driving away. And let's assign a few things. For example, the speed that you're moving at, let's call that VO for the observer speed. And the frequency that you hear, well, that's FO for the observer frequency. Um, the source of sound has a frequency of F and a speed of V and, of course, a wavelength. Now, because you are moving towards the source of sound, you experience an additional number of wave fronts hitting your ear. And the additional number that, that you experience, well, it's the additional distance that you cover, which is just VT, divided by the length of uh, a wavelength. So the frequency that you hear, well, it's equal to the frequency being emitted plus these additional number of waves because by definition frequency is the number of cycles per second and that's why I leave off the T because it's per second therefore this is equal to one second and one times V naught is just V naught. Now the only thing that's left to do is to use the wave equation don't forget that V equals lambda F and I'm writing it here in the right hand corner and therefore, the wavelength is equal to the speed over the frequency. So plugging that in, we get this. It's a complex fraction. This guy comes up top. So we get this. And then I just factor out the F, and we get our final result of F naught, the observed frequency, equals the emitted frequency, multiplied by 1 plus the observer speed divided by the speed of sound. Now, this makes sense. As he moves faster, this number here goes up, and therefore the frequency, the observed frequency goes up. Now what if you're moving away? Well, then you would just plug in a negative number for the velocity. Everything becomes negative, and you get a negative there for the situation where you're speeding away from the source of sound. Great, let's box this up, and let's take an example. Let's put in some numbers, and I'll write the numbers in green. Let's say, for example, the car is going 50 meters per second. This frequency here, F, is equal to 500 hertz. And the speed of sound in air for today's temperature, say, is 340 meters per second. Well, if you plug all that stuff in, and I'll let you do it at home, you will get an observed frequency of 573 hertz.